So this is our second event with this group of students doing the Food for Thought here on the Mayo campus in partnership with AFRI. It's great, it's been this idea of trying to interrupt the system of the busy college life, the busy everyday life, the busy modern life and to call a halt to the busyness and to stop and to think and to reflect and from our perspective as educators to create a space where our students can be empowered to realise the use of dialogue and asking questions and as some of the guys have already said not just asking questions but really listening to the answers and hearing what others are saying and that's a really important space I think that gets missed in the busyness but also part of the process is that it gives permission to stop it invites people to make a choice about thinking about the world, thinking about the causes of things that are happening, but really importantly, what's my role in the future and how can I influence change? And so I think that's important learning for all of us. And we're on this learning journey with our students as well. And we've learned a lot from last year. We've learned even more from this year. And we hope that this learning continues to grow and grow in a way that it continues to develop, I suppose, conceptually and what it means to people. So it doesn't necessarily mean bigger or in more places but that it continues to evolve and I think something that's really powerful about this particular event is the student ownership so they get invited slashed encouraged <laughs> to come in and do this event but very quickly they, they take it on and they're really inspiring and they're so capable and it's a lovely journey to be part of with them when they start to realise how capable they are and how much they can do and just see them flourish in that space and to bring other students then along that journey with them. We gained a lot of experience and insight today. There was a lot of food for thought, meaning, you know, a lot of conversations provoked in our little facilitation and groups. You know, I learned a lot from and as a college here, it just opened a space where people could speak freely and not be judged and it was just a break from mobile phones the news in the world is very negative at the minute so just a great break from that uh, the feedback was good people enjoyed it they felt more comfortable in a free space where they weren't getting judged i feel like they opened up more to everybody and making sure that their voices were heard it was really really beautiful um i couldn't actually believe how much work that the students put into it it was really well organized. I'm also really, really proud of my lecturers because when the opening speech was made by the students and, you know, all of that, I really couldn't believe that there were students that, you know, took centre stage and put up such an event. So it, was, it was really good. I was impressed. I feel amazing. I feel inspired. I feel like I was part of a really good team, but it did. It all came together perfectly. I think each and every one of us in our group, everyone pulled their weight. Everyone just went above and beyond just to pull together and just to ensure that everybody really enjoyed the day. And I think everybody did some great feedback from everyone I've talked to so I'm really really happy you know it's not easy facilitating groups and um, that are coming in about different topics so I enjoyed that I got a lot of learning from that and it was just really good to hear people's thoughts and what they think about the different issues that are in society today so yeah it was really really enjoyable and re really educational today was super um always coming into these sort of events it's always a shot in the dark you haven't really no idea what you're going to expect I think the crowd really made it and as a team we all pulled it together so it was over the moon to see and now that it's done over the moon to see that everything's come together and all ended well. No one held back when it came to speaking. It was brilliant. Like everyone got really, really, really into it. And we got quite empowered from it, I think. Turning like an old sports hall into this cornucopia of empowerment, I think, by the end of the day, really felt like that. So no, it was over, over the moon with it. A highlight for me, it was really nice to hear conflicting opinions clashing, but then both sides of the story listening to each other. That was pretty cool. Uh, and it was also really nice just to have our group all come together and like facilitate this. It was pretty cool. Everyone was pretty nervous in the build up, but then it worked out really well. So it's nice to see the start to finish process. I feel like everyone learned something from the discussions and they were all very inspiring. The highlight for me was definitely the workshops. I really enjoyed teaching people how to play the flute. Very enjoyable experience overall. You need to understand, an asylum seeker is not a normal person. I'm using the word normal, not in terms of abnormality, oh. but I'm saying it's got a lot of circumstances. Some of them have passed through torture. I, 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 I was my church burned. My senior pastor was killed, burned, not just killed, burned inside the church. I was lucky to escape. Some cars are burned. Uh, some people who fled war. 
Some of them have seen their wife and daughters raped in their presence. And they killed. And then they escaped through some. And so when you stand in front of an officer to say, I have a problem, I want to seek asylum, the first thing the person wants is acceptance and, you know, reassurances. What we tried to do is just to try and capture as much as we could of what happened, the key words and key images of the day. The idea is just that this is really a record of what happened, so we're kind of trying to harvest some of the ideas and the atmosphere. There was lots of people involved in doing this, so it's definitely a group effort with the class. So. The words on the tree are really the key words that kept coming up again and again, yeah. yeah. So that was the idea, that that word tree there is the core of the thing, in that sense, yeah. 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 And change makes so prominent. Change is the key idea, and power is a big one as well in there, yeah. yeah. So those, those two ideas kept coming up. The accordion. The accordion, yeah. Here we have people isolating out underlying causes and coming up with some solutions. I think the room in there is the most wonderful, wonderful scene. It gives me the greatest hope for the future of development, community development, people development, all the developments that go hand in hand. Margaret Wheatley is a great writer, you may be familiar with her, but she says there is no power for change greater than people coming together and talking about what they want, sharing what they have. The sharing here today has been absolutely mind, soul, spirit stuff. Keep it up and we have a great future if it's in your hands and let's listen to us and I would advocate everywhere I go to listen to what you people are telling us. We need to hear what you're saying and we need to learn from you. So thank you for all this. May you go from strength to strength and may li people's lives be enriched by the unlocking that you're doing. You're unfolding the beauty within is reflected in the beauty without, even in the rain.